Hey guys, if you're looking to get all the updates from Microsoft 365 but don't want to spend hours sifting through the announcements like me, stay tuned because in this episode we're going to walk through all the latest feature enhancements, changes, and new releases that you don't want to miss. Okay guys, so we're going to go through the entire Microsoft suite of updates here, but just a quick reminder, I do supplement this video with a blog post down below in the video description, so be sure to check that out after you watch the video. Diving in here though, we're going to start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This first one's related to Teams on mobile devices, just improving accessibility for live captions. Users will now have customizability capabilities of both the background and the font color. This will happen mid-September and be complete by late September. The next couple of announcements here are related to some security improvements Microsoft's making within Teams for file and link protection. It's extending some of that safe link, safe attachment protection if you're familiar with that in Defender. But this basically uh, blocks the unsafe content here, as you can see in this example. And in this case, they blocked this suspicious looking message with also an executable. Likely executable should not be shared within Teams. And that user actually didn't send that message all the way through. That's just what they see on their side. This will happen though early November and be complete by mid-November. The next one here is also a lighter version of this for warning messages instead of actually blocking that all together for malicious URLs. You can see that warning message here with a link for more helpful information. This will happen early November and be complete by mid-November. Next one here is specifically only included for some reason in the higher level plans like Defender for Office 365 Plan 2. But this is basically if those messages come across, the user can report it as not a security concern or a false positive, much like they would do today um, as part of an email message or something like that. So timelines on this one is early November and be expected to be complete by mid-November. Next one here is extending some of the note capabilities or note taking capabilities that you would see normally in a Teams meeting into a group chat powered by Loop on the back end, which is Microsoft's note taking tool, modern note taking tool. As part of that, this one will happen late September and be complete by early October. Next one here is related to a Teams premium feature set for customizing the screen in the Teams town hall through the manage what attendees can see, basically giving you a markup you know, for what the screen will look like as they maybe sit in the lobby before the meeting starts and as the meeting goes on. This will happen late October and be complete by early November. Next one here is a feature improvement here. Microsoft Teams has had message forwarding capabilities for some time now, but this is now gonna deep link the user back into the contextual conversation if they have access to see that as part of this as well too. You can see that here in this screenshot. This will happen early November and be complete by mid-November. Hey guys, if you're looking to save hours performing Microsoft 365 security assessments and have client-facing reporting at your fingertips in under 60 seconds, check out a tool that I built called Cloud Capsule, which allows you to automate Microsoft 365 assessments. And we mapped over 150 data points and baseline standards such as CIS and NIST. Within seconds, you'll have policy information and mappings across the entire Microsoft 365 suite in a single platform here that you can navigate. And within our baselines, we've recently mapped to the foundations benchmark from CIS. You can now see all of these controls with automated pass fail evidence and evidence collection with full remediation steps for each control. So if this looks interesting and you wanna run a free scan on your environment or a client environment, head over to cloudcapsule.io and run a free assessment today. Shifting into Microsoft Outlook here, this first one's related to being able to save an event as a draft on your calendar. If you're not ready to send out the invites just yet, this is giving users more flexibility here on that experience. This will be complete by mid-October of this year. This next one's a funny one to me because it feels like this should have been a day one item, but effectively here, if users are still in the classic Outlook, it's going to allow them to migrate their settings automatically uh, from the legacy experience into the new Outlook experience if they are supported. That's an important asterisk that you'll see here. But you can see in the screenshots, this is kind of the message they will see. And they can also see this side-by-side -side view um, as they're going through that. So much better experience. Again, a little late to the party, but I guess better late than ever. This one will happen mid-October and continue over the next few months here. Last one for Microsoft Outlook is the retirement of the Outlook Lite app. A lot of you may not be familiar with this, but they have a separate application on iOS and Android called Outlook Lite. And this is something that they're going to deprecate in lieu of putting their energies into the core Outlook application. It will be retired on October 6th. So after that time, nobody can install it. And then a few months later, they'll deprecate it completely. 
Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, this is a new feature set through CSP that allows you to customize the initial start menu layout. It's an enhanced policy. For those of us that are practitioners that have been pushing this out, we know that this experience can be somewhat clunky. And specifically, as I put in the second bullet here, it often would revert the user's personalization uh, for the start pins, for the experience that you would see there once they restarted their device. So this is giving you a more advanced policy. I put all the setup configuration steps uh, as a link within my blog post if you wanna check this out a little bit further. Shifting into the Microsoft 365 apps here, this first one's related to OneNote. This is something I actually thought already existed, but they are now extending sensitivity labels into OneNote as part of that experience so you can label sensitive documents accordingly. This will happen late January 2026 and be complete by late January 2027. So quite a long rollout here. Hopefully they get that a little bit more narrow as time goes on. This next one here you may have already been experiencing, but I wanted to call it out here because it's affecting users who leverage Chromium-based browsers such as Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. And this is basically a new uh, update that's gonna go out that if you're using OneDrive on the web or subsequent service like SharePoint, the user is going to get this message that you see in the screenshot here to allow or block. It's a little bit confusing. You might get support desk tickets about that. They simply just need to click on allow, but it's part of uh, these new privacy related changes that you need to consent to. The full information, including how to automatically configure this if you're managing these browsers is in my blog post if you want to check that out. Then the last one here for Microsoft 365 apps is a continued controversial topic here of Microsoft trying to shove Copilot down our throat. This is specifically related to Microsoft automatically installing the 365 Copilot app on Windows devices that already have the Microsoft 365 desktop apps, except in the European environment or ecosystem there. So they're doing it where they potentially can from a, a compliance perspective. Um, as an admin, you can turn this off and configure this to not actually automatically install. Um, but this will happen in early October and complete in mid-November. Instructions for opting out of this is in my blog post. Shifting into Microsoft SharePoint here, these two features that I'm going to cover are part of SharePoint Advanced Management, or SAM. It's an acronym here. This is a newer add-on product that they have built that's also included in Microsoft Copilot, if you have a Microsoft Copilot for 365 subscription. But this is basically giving you this capability of, of a new feature set called Content Management Assessment. And this is effectively evaluating your SharePoint sites for health, you know, over permission sites, things like lifecycle readiness, um, all into a single dashboard. So I'll be interested to see what this looks like. If you've been using this in the past, you kind of had to do a lot of these things with PowerShell scripts that they gave you. So this is giving users a more friendly UI um, to interact with. Might do a video on that when that comes out. But this will happen early October and be complete by early November. Next one here is also related to a SharePoint advanced management feature. And this is related to a feature set called Site Lifecycle Management. So they have acronyms and sub-acronyms for everything, right? Um, but I, I call this out not specifically because it would affect SMB because it's likely you're not going to be managing a scope of up to 10,000 SharePoint sites as an example, but more so to call you know, attention to there's these advanced governance capabilities you now have access to. If you have those types of subscriptions where you can actually manage inactive sites um, and archive them, as an example of this, there's GA Today if you have that licensing model. Shifting into Microsoft Entra, this was an interesting one here that's now available in public preview, which is cross-cloud synchronization, effectively giving users and admins the capability to streamline user lifecycle management across multiple different tenant types, i.e. a commercial tenant, as well as GCC, um, US government, as an example. You can see more of that in the settings. There's a lot to unpack with this one. If you're dealing with CMMC clients, this might be something that's of interest to you. Uh, for configuration, it does require an add-on license with Microsoft outside of the base plan. I have all that information, including the setup details on this, in my blog post if you wanna see more. But the general availability on this one is late September, mid-October. Shifting into the admin section here, this first one's related to the Teams Admin Center and specifically giving users more capabilities or admins more capabilities to control external access uh, by domain for specific users and groups. So previously, you're only able to whitelist uh, you know, a domain that's allowed to communicate with your organization uh, across the entire organization as a whole versus saying, hey, you know, users from this group can communicate with contoso.com and users from this group can communicate with cloudcapsule.com um, as an example. 
And so this one is available starting in late October and be complete by mid-December. Next one here is related to Defender for Office 365 with an enhanced email entity page experience. You can see that here in the screenshot. If you're an administrator or SOC analyst that's used this, you know that this is widely valuable because of the clunky experience that we've been used to um, before this. It would open up new windows for us. It would shift us out of context of the overall incident um, that we were looking at, and it was very clunky to get to what we needed and still do the investigation of a potential incident. So this will happen early November and be complete by late November. Also another security update here where the hard delete capabilities you would normally see with actions that you would be taking from a security perspective with email are now going to extend into the calendar uh, invites as well too because if you hard deleted things that were malicious in nature, an attacker sent an email invite or a calendar invite, I should say, with malicious links in it, things like that, it actually wouldn't remove off of the user's calendar, if that makes sense. So this is giving admins the capability to do that. Timelines on this one's early September and be complete by late September. And then the next two here I'm gonna go over is more of a licensing update. This was an announcement Microsoft made around uh, new add-on licensing for business premium uh, users as well here too. It's effectively taking the E5 security add-on and the E5 compliance add-on and including them you know, as, as add-ons you can bolt into business premium or combined um, as a use case. So combined, it's just $15 add-on, which is really cost-effective if you think about that for everything that you get over bumping yourself up to, you know, from business premium to E5, which is effectively saying you're going from a $22 license a month to 57. Um, this is 15, and then subsequently you can buy either the E5 security add-on or purview add-on, um, which they're calling purview suite and defender suite now. They rename that again, uh, classic Microsoft and each one of those are $10 standalone. So more information about this if you want to see all the feature sets. I've also made a video on the E5 add-on in a previous video if you want to check that out. And this other one here is this new um, CSP promotion for Copilot. So if you have customers that are interested in Copilot, previously they had promotions, but they required a 100 seat minimum. This one's now a 10 seat minimum. So it's a little bit better. Um, and you get a 15% off uh, from the cost there. This will happen in Q4 effectively, so October through December. Shifting into the last section here, which is Copilot. This was a big announcement here where Microsoft expanded the model choice into Claude and Anthropic um, effectively here with Microsoft Copilot. You can see that here in this video. It specifically only works today with their researcher agent in Copilot Studio, but it's interesting to see now they're extending the models outside of you know the classic GPT models into these other ones. Timelines on this one, September 24th, where it starts to roll out. And it does require an admin opt-in, which you can look at if you're using Copilot today um, in my blog. Next one here is a channel agent for every team in your environment here. So it's effectively a, a team specific agent that you can use and chat with to talk about you know, conversations, past meetings, allow you to aggregate information that's more of a domain expert on everything in the channel uh, where you don't actually have to set anything up yourself. It'll automatically be created. This will come out in public preview mid-September and be complete by mid-October. Next one here is a knowledge agent in SharePoint that's going to hover around the lower right corner and it has contextual information about what you're looking at at that point in time. So really, my, what Microsoft's doing with this, in my opinion, is you could always create a SharePoint agent now, you know, as sort of something that could source the information out of your Docker repository, things like that. Now they're just going to have this out of the box where users can automatically start chatting with it, and it might help you update information as you're seeing here in the screenshot or the video that's playing. But you also might be leveraging it to find information as part of this as well, too. So just contextually aware um, from where it's at. It's also public preview mid-September, and it will complete from the rollout perspective in late February. Next one here is related to updates in memory and personalization. Microsoft introduced memory you know, about a month or two ago now, you know, which was kind of late to the party, if you ask me, uh, with some of the things that they were doing. But now it's also including conversational history, which, again, a little late to the party, but better late than never, um, just as the other announcement there. Um, but it's going to aggregate past um, contextual information to help users receive more relevant and contextual replies. This will happen mid-October and be complete by late October. 
Next one here, I didn't actually realize Microsoft had this video generation capability that's built in. Um, I might be naive to say that, but this announcement here was talking about a major upgrade that makes it easier than ever to create videos, sourcing them from you know, a text prompt, PowerPoint files though, PDFs and Word documents. Might play around with that and see how good it actually is. Um, but this will happen late September, be complete by late October. Next one here is just an enhancement where you're able to upload multiple reference images to create a new image, which I think is a, an important feature if you're looking to give it a lot of context to curate that new information. This will happen late September, be complete by the end of September. Next one here is this capability of the open in Word action button in the Copilot chat. So basically taking the contextual information of how Copilot is responding and open that into a Word document so that you can you know, use that as a canvas to iterate further. Could be especially helpful if you're using it to start the first draft of a paper or something like that. Timelines on this one's late September, be complete by early October. Next one here is a library experience for the Copilot app. This is basically giving you a hub for all the images you may have created or you know, co-pilot pages, things like that. And they're easily to use and sourceable library um, versus having to go back into that chat history, which would be pretty time consuming. This will start and end around mid-October. Next one here is also a cool one, I think, that's integrating workflows, Teams workflows experience within the scheduled prompt capability as well here too. You can see that clearly within this example. Microsoft introduced scheduled prompts, but they're incorporating it into this workflow experience here. So you could do things like, say, summarize my email every day, every morning. My only complaint with it up to this point in time is that it only allows you to schedule that up for, you know, a week out effectively. So you'd have to re-engage it. But I believe with this workflow as experience that would solve uh, for that problem of it just like falling off and having it go continuously. So timelines on this one's mid-October and also be complete around that mid-October timeframe. Next one here is around pricing with Copilot and usage. So they introduced more of a pay-as-you-go model um, as part of this where you would just pay on a consumption-based model. But a lot of organizations obviously want to have some throttling with that. They don't want just users to go buck wild and they get this massive bill that said, hey, you used 100,000 chats, you know, pay us $600,000, whatever it might be um, as part of that. So they're allowing you to buy and pre-purchase these, these packs of consumption. It's around 25,000 chat experiences as part of that. You can check out more information on the blog for pricing, things like that. Well, this will happen late September, be complete by early October of 2026. Um, that's not a typo. That's actually what they cite in their documentation. So not sure you know, if we'll get some more specific timelines, but that's what it's at today. And then the very last one here for Copilot, it's just giving you this contextual information of having Copilot on the sidebar versus having to go to it in a specific tab. So this is helpful for chats, channels, calling, good meetings where you don't have to go back and forth. You can stay within the context of where you're at, but still chat with Copilot, which I actually think is a really great enhancement and much needed enhancement. Um, this will start in mid-November and complete in a few weeks after that. Hey guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any questions you had about any of these announcements. Be sure to run a free scan of your Microsoft tenant with Cloud Capsule. There's a link in the description of this video. I'll see you guys next week.